Golden Tate does have nice eyes, but Chase Daniel's still way cuter. What's up, YouTube? It's the NFL Week 15 Picks Against the Spread video for the 2019 NFL season. Week 14's winner is a mystery. We have four contenders with 12 wins. Everybody went over on their picks, but congratulations to Green Bay Fudge Packers, Claymaker75, hotter than Dylan's private cam stash for Mickey Lanta, which we will touch on later, and a classic, It Hurts When I Fart. All right, guys, this thing's already been spinning for about 30 seconds. <laughs> We're going to see where this thing lands. Fat guy, any thoughts? Why would you set it for this long? Oh, it's just automatic. Yeah, yeah, that's. I'm sure that's what it was. Roulette colors, I like that. Passenger nice 57, color. always bet on black. Always bet on black. Uh, it's a 50% chance to hit black. It's looking like Claymaker. No, 75. yes! Oh, green house wins. Congratulations to the everyday regular Playmaker 75. You're, you're going home with the NFL Week 14 t shirt, fat guy. Yeah, better get on that, eh? That was exciting. Congratulations to Claymaker, who did go 12 and 4. Fat guy, any other thoughts about the Week 14 leaderboard? Well, Green Bay Fudge Packers missed a game and still got 12 wins. But yep. you got to be on top of these things. Now, the percentage might be higher, but you, you know. Break the deal, face the wheel, as anti-entities <laughs> would say in uh, Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. So 999 coming in fifth. Bad at business, formerly good at business at six. Cason at seven. I'm making the leaderboard, I think, last week as well. Nice work. Sorry at eight. Delonte West is your daddy at ninth. And East Steelers in tenth. Also, shout out to Jay the Infamous, who was tied in the top ten, but didn't quite make the cut, as you would oh, say. Oh, what a nice guy. Let's go on to the picks against the spread overall leaderboard where pick last continues to dominate in first place. Three game lead, a three win lead, I should say, over East Dealers. Mickey Hill and us, Big Ryan the Fat Guy, are just one game behind East Dealers, four games behind pick last. Gay for Fat Guy, Detroit one time, Setuple, Bo, Captain Sabaho, as well as Playmaker. This week's a, winner. Yeah, making a hot run up into the top. Yeah, 10. right on. So for the season, we're 115, 92, and 1. Good for 55.6%. Fat guy, it's been an excellent season so far. They're pretty good. We, I don't mind those percentages. They're on the happy side of 50. They sure are, and we were 9 and 7 this week, so adding to the stats. I guess Pad the stats. Padding the stats. And then maybe the most anticipated. Second, I'll, I'll give it the second most anticipated. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Second. The JS715, name of the week. Honorable mention. Let's start off with number one, and that's Green Bay. Fudge Packers, back in thoughts. Green Bay Fad, Fudge Packers, an oldie but a goodie. Domino's pizza delivery guy. Uh, it's probably some negative foreshadowing when it comes to the wager of the century. Shaving, shaving Dylan Toddfield. A little bit more of a uh, <laughs> of a better foreshadow. Talk of, about hitting it on the head. Talk about talk about hitting it on the head. Hotter than Dylan's private cam sesh for Mickey Lanta. Not bad. The stakes might have to. Have to, have to I'm gonna have to increase after this wager. And yeah. Bo not happy Bo not happy finishing of fat guy. I think he means on fat guy, but that's kinda maybe, why that egg corn didn't maybe work. Maybe he's for not me. finishing happy finishing off the fat guy. Oh I don't yeah, no one wants to do that, it's I would up imagine. To the viewers, the it's up viewers, to the viewers uh, to decide. Yeah. And then the number one name of the week, Delonte West is your daddy. Well, I mean it, you know why I went with this one? Because he kind of foreshadowing it's becoming the word of the week now because first of all he had a he had a lebron james uh name the week before and yep, then he went US. with one he followed it up he followed up he finished the story delante west is your daddy <laughs> i didn't mind this one so all right on to the picks no 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 fat guy well compete week 15 big around the fat guy.com link is in the description but this is the most exciting part all right of the week 15 video and I'm going to let you take this one. I will. Well, we had the wager of the century. Now, this is the recap of the century. So the wager was San Francisco plus three and a half points at New Orleans. Mickey Hill having to put up two pizzas of Dylan's uh, Todd Field's choosing along with the uh, buttered crust. Oh, that was one of the names I forgot. Mmm, buttered crust. I really love that one. That was, that was a fantastic. And uh, whereas Dylan Toddfield, if the Saints weren't able to cover 
which they weren't, spoiler alert, he was going to have to put up his eyebrows. So we have a wonderful before and after right here. Yeah, before? This, this one's the before. After. <laughs> yeah, this so uh, awesome. he, he, he did claim that he's not going to get, eye, he's not going to have eyebrows for the rest of his life. I don't know how we're going to enforce that, but I'm going to enjoy this for the time being. I said it's simple. Send us a daily picture and keep us updated. <laughs> All right, then. The, uh, there's a couple other bets uh, made this week, or, or potential bets. People people tickling the ivories or something. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're going to horn, horn in on this one, and we'll see what happens in the future, because this could get spicy. Yeah, remember to join our live stream Sunday for the Sunday night football game, Monday night football game. Uh, it's getting it's getting spicy, like the fact I said. But on to why everybody's here, other than looking at Dylan Toddfield's eyebrowless face. Is for the picks. Week 15. Back out, let's start off Thursday night. New York Jets at Baltimore. Ravens 15.5 point favorites at home. 64% of early betters are on the Ravens. Fat guy, who you got? It's a classic fat guy pick. I'm not laying 15.5 points. I mean, could Baltimore cover this against the lowly Jets? Absolutely. But I'm not doing it. I, I, I got to take this game. I'm taking the Jets. Uh, very few people taking the Jets, and I can understand why. Another, I guess we'll call it uninspiring performance. In a game I thought they should have, not they should have, but I thought they were going to probably blow, blow out the Miami Dolphins. Weren't able to do it. It was a last-second field goal. And uh, who was it? Sanders kicking seven field goals for the Dolphins? Pretty, awesome. pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Now, all of that being said, uh, the Ravens do have an entry to Lamar Jackson as it stands on this Monday night, but he was limited in the walkthrough. I think he's going to be okay. It's less than 24 hours after the game. However, though, we were discussing in the live stream that this is an opportunity for a middle, perhaps. So if you are at this, or you are watching this on a Monday or a Tuesday and the line's the same, why not jump on the Jets? And then if possible, if possible, the Ravens could could end up not playing Lamar because of an injury. And then that line would drastically drop to somewhere like 10 or 9.5. 9.5 would be fantastic. Yeah, then you can was, take the Ravens. I was projecting 7.5. You are projecting 9.5. Yes. Anywhere there, you're, you're skipping over some not-so-key numbers, but you're skipping over key numbers that, that could help you with that bet. Well, yeah. So if you took the Jets at plus 15.5 and, and then the Ravens, say, at 9.5, in the event that Lamar doesn't play, we're cre creating a fantasy scenario. But it is a chance. Then you would be able to win both bets. At numbers, if it, the game finished, Ravens by 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I, I like the odds on that. It's rare, but it could happen. We don't get to bring up middling plays very often, so I thought this would be a good opportunity. As it stands, though, I'm very confident Lamar is going to play, and I'm still going to be on the Jets, who are uh, retaining Le'Veon Bell probably on Thursday. So give me the Jets and give me the points. Next up, onto the Sunday early games. We'll start off with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling to Detroit to take on the Lions. Lions three and a half point favorites at home. Forty-three percent of early betters are on the Lions. Fact guy, who you got? I got the Lions. Little interesting tidbit here, though. Seventy-nine percent of the money is on the Detroit Lions. Interesting. Yeah, we're gonna start adding these little tidbits into the video from here on out. Uh, since less people are betting on the Lions, but more money's on it, uh, that gives me a lot of confidence. In fact, there's a line movement from four to. Uh, plus four to plus three and a half. I mean, obviously that's you'd rather have the better line with the Lions, but I still feel there's meat on the bone. The Sharps haven't picked it clean. Probably at plus three, ah, it's hard to say, but three and a half is a very significant number. So if you are able to get this number, I think this is a good bet here because uh, three is obviously key. I'd rather have a win at three than a push. So give me the Lions and give me the three and a half points. And yes, I know who's playing quarterback. Next up. It's Philadelphia Eagles travel to Washington to take on the Skins. Six-point underdogs at home. 35% of early betters are on the Skins. Back guy, who you got? I'm going to be taking the Skins. Uh, most people and most of the money is on the Eagles. I think that could, I think it could trend in the wrong direction considering their performance against the Giants. Although uh, box score betters are going to like that they were able to come back in a... Uh, are we going to call it a thrilling? It's more of an ugly victory, I would say, against the New York Giants. Redskins kept it close against the Green Bay Packers. They really did. They were able to cover the spread. And uh, I wouldn't say maybe tempt the score, but they were close enough. And I call that a good effort. Now, there was, was an argument last week about a good losing effort. It doesn't exist. I kind of think it does. And uh, But it is just a one sample. But I think the Redskins don't have much clout. And the Eagles have a little bit more despite being uh, pretty disappointing this season. 65% on the Eagles, 35% on the Redskins. I get a underdog at home. You know, that's just a fat guy staple. 
with a uh, lack of the public backing, I'll be taking the Washington Redskins and I'll be taking the points. I will say this though, uh, with, with someone like Dwayne Haskins, someone who has tend to throw higher, uh, higher interception rate, maybe a team that turns the ball over a little bit too much. We could say about the Redskins. I do feel like there's a, uh, there is some disparity between money line betting and spread betting on this one. And I almost feel like this is a better money line play. Uh, I don't have the data to back that one up. So this is just a theory, a theory that I've been, I don't know, kind of cathartically dispelling throughout these videos. So I'm going to be doing a lot more of that uh, research in the off season, but I do think that they should be taken in the spread. But I, I think there's a chance that this is actually a better money line bet than it is a spread bet. And I get it. If the Eagles kill them, that still doesn't make me think that this is a bad bet. So like I said to one of the, the viewers earlier in the last week's comment video, there's an 11% chance of rain and it rains. That doesn't mean that the forecast was wrong. The 11% just came in. Because we got to think in the law of large numbers, what's going to happen over a long period of time? Long period of time, I think it's a Redskins cover for the most part and possibly a value on a, a, a Redskins win with the right odds at the right price. Yeah, guys, watch this line. It's interesting that it stayed at six. It opened at six. It's currently at six. 91% of the money is on the Eagles. Very early line. money, though. It is early money, but still, that line hasn't moved. It stayed at six, so watch that line. Exposure from the book. Exactly. The next up game is Chicago Bears at Green Bay Packers. Packers, five-point favorites at home. 48% of early bettors are on the Packers. That guy, who you got? Uh, I'm going to be taking the Bears here. Uh, this is a little bit of a revenge game here, we're going to call it, for the Chicago Bears. What did they play? Week one, Big Ryan? Week one, Thursday night. It's the Open first game, game, opening Open game. The season. And the Bears were three and a half point favorites, I think, bet down to three at game time. Yeah, I think that was and around what it was. Covered handily. Yeah, and we lost. <laughs> yeah. all, all of that being said, uh, this line was at seven. Now it's at, uh, at five, some spots four and a half. Uh, public is liking the... Public is split rather on this game. There's a slightly bit more money on Green Bay, but I, I'm still back in Chicago Bears on this one. I think this is a three and a half, four point game. A little bit better of a game from the Bears uh, against the Cowboys, I guess upsetting. Green Bay has been quietly running on all cylinders, uh, despite not getting a blowout like most people desired against the Washington Redskins. I don't have too much to say about this game, but uh, maybe Mitchell Trubisky can turn in a little bit better of a performance. This is uh, not really much of a not much of a betting pick for me. This is more of a contest pick. But contest-wise, when in doubt, take the points. I'm not going to doubt the Bears. Give me the Bears and the five points. I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball at you here. A scenario. I'm hoping that Chicago wins this game outright because I think you think that there's a lot of value on taking the Packers Super Bowl. I actually do. That would be quite nice. I think the Packers are... I'm going to say about even with the top-tier teams. So... But I but the Packers have a lot less um, highlight reel stuff. They're doing it the the old and ugly way, kind of. And Aaron Rodgers isn't like lighting up the uh, uh, lighting up the highlight reel, which is for me is good because I mean, what difference does it make if you win? I don't care if they're fanciful plays. I don't care about swag, guys. I wouldn't do well as a hockey player. I got to be honest. So I, I think what he's saying is is it's an ugly loss will give you a good price because of the emotional nature of the public and and that kind of stuff is completely irrational because if they lose say they lose let's fast forward they lose 40 to 3 we'll call it something like that does that really change how green bay is aesthetically it means nothing it means they're the same team as long as it's healthy they're the same team so if i can get an ugly loss here that, that actually i think it's good because he is right i'm kind of i'm starting to be uh Starting to get a little fanciful of the Packers as far as the Super Bowl goes. Of course, if I'm getting the right price, because the price has to be right. And as we know, everybody's got a price. Everybody's got a price. All right, back on to the next game. Let's take a look at New England at Cincinnati. Cincinnati, 10-point underdog, 17% 17, 17 of early betters are on the Bengals. Back guy, who you got? Uh, it was, I, I wanted to look, I, I was looking forward to betting on the Pats, to be honest. Because, I mean, after, uh, what, is it two two-game losing yeah. streak? But a few people in the live stream said the same thing. I thought there would be good value on them, though. But the problem is they're playing the lowly Bengals, right? Yeah. So they're still going to carry so much more clout. I mean, who has less clout than the Bengals do? I don't think anybody, really. They're no, probably the they're... most 
unpopular team in the they're eyes of the public. Our favorite team this year. Yeah, it's got even though they haven't exactly made us money, they're still our favorite as far as value is concerned in the long term sense. Uh, very few people are betting on the Bengals. I get double digit dogs at home. That is printing money in the long run. Could New England kill them? Sure. Is New England probably going to kill them? I don't think so because I think it'll keep it in the number. I don't mind this Bengals team getting 10 points at home. I was. What's kind of annoying about this is like we're talking about the emotional nature of the public. If if New England blew out Kansas City, I could see us getting 14 and a half plus on this oh, game, which is insane. Or were they? They were 18 point favorites against Miami in a similar spot. Similar spot. And okay, now they were able to. They smoked Miami, but let's let's do a rewind now. If they were to play Miami right now in Miami this weekend, do you really think? That they're 18 points better they're not no, and you could argue at that time team. you could argue at that time but i don't think those teams aren't that much different they aren't maybe miami got a little bit better it took took a little bit of time to well, gel but miami's way better new england sucks now so it'd be yeah like exactly right so it did, none of that makes any sense the, the, the team's strengths are what they are uh the Bengals turned in another worst performance but i'm getting a double digit dog at home which as everyone knows is pretty much printing money in the nfl in over the long run over the long run. All right. <laughs> Bengals in the points. Next up, Houston at Tennessee. Tennessee, two and a half point favorites at home. 43% of betters are on the Titans. Back out here, you got. Uh, well, a lot of places this line is three, but the juice is with t uh, Houston. So, I mean, it's that's pretty much a heavy juice with Houston plus three is equal to Houston plus two and a half at reasonable juice. So that being said, the line can be construed as Tennessee minus two and a half, even though most shops have it at, at three. I'm going to be taking the Tennessee Titans, and this is going to be a contest pick for me. I don't know. I'm probably not going to be wagering much on this game. I don't, it got into my head, I don't mind Tennessee, maybe for a small play. I think it's just going to be a good game for football, to be honest. Houston was upset horribly by uh, the Denver Broncos. That worked well for us. Uh, however... Ten Tennessee was able to churn in a very good performance against uh, the Oakland Raiders. Excellent. Just just tearing them up. Brian Tannehill, for those fantasy lovers, this might be a good spot start play at quarterback. If you look at his numbers in fantasy, actually, I haven't brought up the entire year. But being in the playoffs myself in two different leagues, this has become a little bit of a thing, so I might as well give it a plug. The Tennessee Titans uh, quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, been very, very stout as far as fantasy production. Might be a worth a pickup if you are in need of a quarterback. The throw fantasy aside, in the spread, I'll be taking the Tennessee Titans. And I, I think this is a good game because of the playoff implications. They'll be playing each other in about two weeks, I think. So I think they're playing in week 17. So you're going to get a week 15 and week 17 battle. Uh, I don't quite like that scheduling, but it's a little bit interesting. I'll be taking the Tennessee Titans. I'll be laying the points, but it's purely a contest pick. But I kind of want to watch this game just as a fan. Yeah, market-wise, this game is pretty split. Even pretty split. Both, both with picks, both with money. I think it's going to stay that way unless any uh, crazy inactives happen last second. Back guy, on to the next game where the Seattle Seahawks travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Panthers, six-point underdogs at home. Only 13% of betters are on the Panthers. Back guy, who you got? Well, pretty, pretty as uh, Dr. E would say, pretty standard. I'll be taking the Carolina Panthers. I'll be taking the six points, and I'll be waiting. Their uh, majority, majority of the money and the people are betting on the Seahawks, and I can understand why. That confidence is unwavering despite a, we'll call it a drubbing, a drubbing by the LA Rams. It was a drubbing. Quite enjoyed that. It was both, uh, it was candy to the eyes for me, and a little. it was financially fruitful for us as well. And so, it was a five-star entertainment oh, of game. Of course it was. Of course it was. This line opened at uh, Seattle minus four and a half, and now it's up to Seattle minus six. I, I think you can wait on this one though, because the book is taking heavy exposure with 91% of the dollars uh, wagered on the Seattle Seahawks. So they're gonna have to balance this out somehow. So I'd imagine that they are gonna move this line. I can't be for sure, obvious, obviously, but I think if you can get the Panthers plus seven, plus seven and a half, dare I say it, is that even possible? Unlikely, but possible, even six and a half. If the line moves, uh, in your favor, you're going to want to wait on the Carolina be uh, Carolina bet. As a pick, I'm still going to take them plus six points. I'd like to get the best line possible. Hey, who knows? Maybe it stays at six here. But as it stands, I, I can't justify laying six with Seattle on the road. Give me the Carolina Panthers and give me the six points. I think actually Sharps are going to come down on Carolina late. 
and actually push that line down. So six crash it. The, six might be the best line you can. Six get, could six could be equilibrium too though. Ah, six not really. I think six is good. I think it's more like four's equilibrium. Yeah, I, I got a feeling that's coming down. But keep your fingers crossed. If you can get that at seven, seven and a half, then jump. Oh, down. that would be amazing. Next up. The Denver Broncos travel to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. Chiefs nine and a half point favorites at home. Thirty-four percent of betters are on Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and the Kansas City Chiefs. Back back, who you got? I'm going to be taking the Denver Broncos. That's uh, I'm not laying nine and a half points. Got to be real here. Divisional divisional matchup. Uh, there is it is hard to get money down in some spots on this because of the uh, injury to Mahomes' hand. I mean, Mahomes. I got to give him credit as far as toughness goes. I mean, he finished out the game. He had, what, a dislocated knee. How many weeks he missed? Two? One? Yeah, I think two. I think two. That's incredible. And they went one and one for those games. And he's at, like, I got to be honest. Like, what a what a great personality. Have you ever heard him in an interview? He's fantastic. And usually I find uh, most players' attitudes and the way they carry themselves very distasteful. I, I think the opposite of Mahomes, the ultimate player for me, as far as uh, effort level, even even quality of plays a rating mvp let's be real here five star he, personality he crosses every book for me that being or every every box for me that being said he does have an injury so it is harder to get money down at the moment there is a lot of money on denver and public on denver so i'm a little leery about this game this wouldn't be a large bet for me if i were able to make a wager nine and a half points denver broncos divisional matchup lots of points i mean part of this is part of the reason this line came down from 11 and a half uh, and there's money on Denver is because they blew out Houston. They just annihilated Houston. With the, I like that play too. If anyone caught it, where that defensive lineman recovered a Kiki QT fumble, one of my least favorite wide receivers, and he handed it off to the cornerback. Very uh, heads heads up play. Really enjoyed it. So uh, Denver, I almost wish that they lost the last game but covered against Houston, so that I could get a little bit better of a price. But I mean, that's just me being greedy. So nine and a half points. Not my favorite bet, but definitely a contest pick. I'll be taking the Broncos. I'll be taking the points. Next up, the Miami Dolphins travel to New York to take on the Giants. Giants three-point favorites at home. 10% of early bettors are on the Giants. Fat guy, who you got? I'm taking the New York Giants. And there's also a majority of the money is on the uh, Miami Dolphins. Dolphins have been almost, they went from zero to cover king. They've been covering like every game, I feel like. Able to pick up another cover and a near win against the New York Jets, which they would have sweeped the series if they were able to win. So the Miami Dolphins have kind of turned the corner, it feels like. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop me from betting the Jets. And again, we were talking about how there's a variance as far as money line versus uh, spread covering. I kind of feel like this is a uh, this is a reasonable... Uh, I almost wish Daniel Jones was playing this game a little bit. Well, if there's I'm, a chance he could still play. There is a chance he could still play. He's in a boot, though. Uh, Eli Manning did a pretty reasonable job uh, putting the Giants in a reasonable position to win against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, he, he didn't put up any second-half points, but, I mean, there there was there was some continuity there. Uh, pretty low-risk stuff. That's why I almost think that Daniel Jones is more suited to win games and uh, Eli Manning is more suited to cover. So as a Giants fan, I would imagine that you'd rather someone who's going to win, like polarizing win or lose, rather than someone who just keeps it close. So in this spot, I kind of hope that Daniel Jones is able to play. Uh, that being said, I, regardless of who's at quarterback, I'll be taking the New York Giants. Public doesn't like them. I will take them. Miami is somehow becoming a bit of a favorite from the, av the average better because their performances have just been uh you know completely polar opposites of what they did in the beginning of the season uh pretty good coaching work from brian flores i gotta be honest and their defense has almost turned the corner perhaps i'll be starting them the, the following week in fantasy uh against the cincinnati Bengals, which is an odd thing to think about miami dolphins defense is playing okay same with their team in entirety ryan Fitzmagic. I'm hoping he can falter against the Giants defense that is capable. And they did get dominated in time of possession. So the defense fell apart. But part of it's because the offense didn't sustain drives in New York in their uh, road loss to the Philadelphia Eagles this Monday night. All of that being said, this is mostly a contest pick. But there's a good chance I'll put a sprinkle on the Giants. So give me the Giants and I'll lay the three points. Next up, the Jacksonville Jaguars travel to Oakland to take on the Raiders. Raiders five and a half point favorites at home. 84% of early bettors are on the Raiders. Fat guy, who you got? I can understand why. I'll be taking the Jacksonville Jags, of course. Uh, the Oakland Raiders, they've lost, what, three straight and 
really horrible performances for the most part. They got dominated in uh, against the New York Jets. And I, I can't remember, was it Chiefs? Chiefs smoked them too. And now they got beat really bad at home by the Tennessee Titans. I got to make one comment here. Derek Carr threw the ball away on fourth down. He did it at the first game of last season against the LA Rams. And then he just did it again. And he blamed the receiver. I don't understand. Throw a pick if it's fourth down for the game. And don't throw it away. Throw an interception then. It doesn't matter. Throw a jump ball. I mean that... I'm not... I'm just... I'm just soapboxing. I mean, we're wearing Raiders gear and stuff or whatever. But I mean... I just... I can't... I can't... I had to comment. It's just so bad. It's so bad. It makes me question the intelligence of the quarterback, which is nothing you want to do. Regardless, I'll be taking... Not because of that play. Just as a purely market play. Feelings out of it. Despite my, my Raiders gear and Big Rise Raiders sweater... We will be taking the Jacksonville Jags. We'll be taking the points. And the Jags have had just back-to-back-to-back miserable performances. I'm hoping Gardner Minshew can right the ship. So give me the Jaguars and give me the points. At some books, you can even get it as high as plus seven. So make sure you shop around, get the right line for Jacksonville as underdogs. Next up, the Cleveland Browns travel to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Cardinals, two-and-a-half-point underdogs at home. 44% 44% of early bettors are on the cards. Fat guy, who you got? Uh, I'm going to be taking the Arizona Cardinals. I do have an over three and a half bet, so I'm really hoping they're able to beat the Cleveland Browns. Uh, here, we'll do this. Maybe this is bad luck for them, right? We'll do that one. See? Do a little hat switch. All right, so let's go Arizona. Let's beat those Cleveland Browns. Yeah, so um, most of the money is wagered on the Cleveland Browns. Most of the people are betting the Cleveland Browns. So give me the Arizona Cardinals. I don't mind them in this spot. I thought they could win outright against the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers on the weekend. They weren't able to do so. Cleveland has some inner turmoil, I don't, although I don't think it's going to affect the game. It's mostly just uh, one really confused human being down in Cleveland. Guy who wears clown shoes and watches on the, on the field. So all of that being said, Arizona at home I think is going to offer reasonable value. Uh, Cleveland pretty much plays the level of the competition for the most part. They were able to have uh, two large spread cover victories against Miami and now Cincinnati. I, I think they're kind of a little bit due down and Arizona's due up and the public doesn't like them. Give me the Arizona Cardinals and give me the two and a half points. Hopefully this moves to three. I should wait on this and bet on it when it goes to three. Next up, the Minnesota Vikings travel to LA to take on the Chargers. Chargers are three point underdogs at home. 14% of early bettors are on the Chargers. Fat guy, who you got? I got my bet of the week, the LA Chargers. Uh, Minnesota's steamrolling. I think they're a fantastic team. Between them and Green Bay, that, just, that is just a strong, strong division. I mean, even Chicago. I mean, their defense hasn't played up as up to snuff as much. But there's there's still, still been decent. And Detroit is a better roster than what their record indicates. All that being said, Minnesota on the road laying three points. Give me the Chargers plus three. Or plus, yeah, plus three points. I almost said two and a half because it is two and a half at some books. So that's why you always got a line shop, folks. So 14% of the public is on the LA Chargers. Ah, that's clearly a fat guy play. I get points at home and it's uh, fading the public. It's just really an easy one here. I mean, and by easy, I mean like 58% of winning. 57 and a half. Mind you, I haven't done very well on my picks of the week this year. Or I think I'm what, three and five now? You're, you're negative. I'm negative. Yeah, I, I can't recall. So that being said, this will be my pick of the week. So I'm going to put, a, I guess, a bad hex on the L.A. Chargers. But that's not going to stop me from betting them. Give me the L.A. Chargers and give me the three points. Yeah, and if it stays at two and a half, you might as well take the money line. You're going to get, uh, it's going to be like plus 140 money line at this point. Uh, so take that if you can, if it stays at two and a half. Otherwise, three is your, your key number where it, you want to get. Oh, point. it depends on the prices. Always weigh the prices. Next up, the... Atlanta Falcons travel to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. 49ers 11-point favorites at home. 59% of early bettors are on San Fran. That guy who you got. Taking Atlanta Falcons plus 11 points. I really don't think this is an 11-point game. I, I guess this is almost me handicapping a little bit. Uh, there's been a... Most of the money is on Atlanta too, despite most of the bets on San Francisco. So that makes me suspect that most of the Sharps are on Atlanta. It looks like at this moment, 62% of the money, which is uh, almost significant, I would say. So Atlanta Falcons, 
And uh, with most of the money and the lack of public backing, that that's a good recipe here. 11 points is a lot. Atlanta's kind of clicking on all cylinders. It almost feels like, well, maybe not that, just salvaging their season a little bit. And San Francisco, I'm going to call it the game of the year against New Orleans. Just two fantastic teams duking it out. And a big fourth and two play by George Kittle to win the game for them, followed by a Robbie Gold field goal. It just was an fantastic. Eyebrow, eyebrow raising game. It was an eyebrow raising, and that's R A R A Z I N G. Uh, I just stole that joke from Big Rye, as lame as it was. All that being said, Atlanta. I think this is an easy play too. It's not only a it's not only a contest pick. This is most certainly a bet as well. So give me Atlanta Falcons and give me the eleven points. It's a nice market play with 42% of betters, but 62% of the dollars wagered on the Falcons. Sharps are on the Falcons. Pretty early. clear. Pretty so clear. Keep an eye out on that line. You want to get that now before it jumps down to, to 10, possibly 9.5. Next up, the LA Rams travel to Dallas to take on the Cowgirls. Cowgirls are a pick em at home. Only 9% of betters are on Dallas. Fat guy, who you got? Well, the Sharps and public alike are all over the Los Angeles Rams on this Monday night. I'm curious when the ball is going to drop and they're all going to jump sides and uh, go to the Dallas Cowboys because the line did open at Dallas minus four, four point favorites. Now they're down to a pick em, as in who's going to win. So I think this is just a, uh, there's a giant boulder just waiting to crash down the hill and chase Indiana Jones out of the temple. So... <laughs> <laughs> so that boulder, I don't know what price it's going to be, and I think it's going to come soon. So I'd rather take the I'd rather take the Cowboys sooner than later. That four point threshold has like that's a pretty significant, pretty significant. Now all you got to do is win the game. I don't mind Dallas to win this game either. So I, I get that people talk about playing for your lives and stuff, but the Cowboys have just as much to play for. And honestly, I don't think any of that stuff really matters when it comes down. Everyone's playing for a job. Everyone's playing for their livelihood. I mean, I get that you have uh, Jason Garrett, but that's more of a polarizing figure. He doesn't. He only makes so much of an impact. And I guess you could say that's a, a negative because a coach only makes so much impact. But those players can play. I do like how Dallas's roster is built, and they aren't. They aren't. They aren't well liked in the betting public at this moment. They're a very polarizing figure, but the sharps are on. Uh, does seem to be early on the LA Rams, but that was at a good price. The price has most certainly changed and swayed into Dallas's favor, moving from minus four to even money. So let's take the Dallas Cowboys and let's lay no points. Let's just win the game, make Jerry Jones happy. Yeah, nice expected value plan on the Dallas Cowboys this weekend. All right, back on to the next game where the Buffalo Bills travel to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Steelers one and a half point favorites at home. 16% of early betters are on the Steelers. Fat guy, who you got? I'm excited to take the Pittsburgh Steelers this weekend. I mean, a little bit of do up, do down situation perhaps, but in reverse, I mean, Buffalo, they lost to Baltimore. So, I mean, does that really hurt their clout? I don't think so. They, you know, they, that win on the road in Dallas has gone a long way. And losing to Baltimore, there's no shame in that. Really, Baltimore is just a stout, stout team. But Buffalo did have a chance to at least tie that game near the end. Pretty interesting stuff. Pittsburgh won a hard-fought game against the Arizona Cardinals. I like Pittsburgh's defense. I mean, I'm using handicap stuff, and I probably shouldn't. And uh, trust in Duck, that's what people like to do. And I'm going to do that this weekend. Uh, the public doesn't like the Pittsburgh Steelers, so I do. I think I could get a better price than this if I do wait. It's one and a half now, and I think you can wait a little bit because a lot of the money is also on Buffalo. So there is there is probably some sharps intertwined with squares on the Buffalo Bills. I think the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, though, are going to offer value at this price and better ones going forward. You just don't want to take Pittsburgh at minus three. Minus two and a half. I mean, I'd rather take the gamble on uh, Pittsburgh becoming underdogs than... Uh, than, than letting it cross the three to three threshold. If I lose a point and it goes to minus two and a half, I'm not going to be too upset about it. So give me the Pittsburgh Steelers and uh, I'm going to lay the points or point and a half rather. My projection is this line's going to finish at, at Steelers two and a half. And it, this is an excellent play market wise. There's contrarian betting on Pittsburgh. Only 16% of early betters are on them, as well as only 20% of the money. As on top of that, it's been a reverse line move and it started out at one. It's gone up to two and a half at some books, so jump on the Steelers now if you can. It's a good market play. Positive EV for the week. Let's jump into Monday Night Football Fact Guy with the Indianapolis Colts. Travel to New Orleans to take on Dylan Toddfield's Saints. Cue the music. 
The Saints are nine-point favorites at home. 63% of early betters are on the Saints. Back guy, who you got? I'll be taking the Indianapolis Colts. Simple as that. I'm not laying nine points with the Saints. You get that. I I think Indy's uh, capable of beating anybody, really, especially when that's highlighted. Now, I always say don't anchor to something, but I'm going to anchor, which I know I'm doing, which is negative. I'm going to anchor their performance against the Kansas City Chiefs as far as good game theory and power run. I will say this, though, it's very difficult to run on the Saints, but if anyone can do it, I think the Indianapolis Colts are able to. Let's hope Mack and company has a good crew. Throw that out the window, though. It is a contrarian play in taking the Indianapolis Colts. Most people are on the Saints, but again, this is another game where I think it's a mix of sharps and squares on the Saints, with most of the money being put on the Saints outrunning their uh, their total, where a disproportionate amount of money in the lower version is on the on the Colts. Only 18%, despite 30, uh, 37% of the betters on the Colts. A little bit eerie. So this is more of a contest pick than a bet, but give me the Colts and give me the nine points. All right, fat guy, I believe it's on to the lightning round. We're going to start off with uh, New York Jets at Baltimore. Gang Green. Tampa Bay at Detroit. Detroit Lions. Philly at Washington. Let's skin them, Redskins. <laughs> Chicago at Green Bay. The Bears. New England at Cincinnati. The Bengals. Houston at Tennessee. The Titans. Seattle at Carolina. The Panthers. Denver at Kansas City. The Broncos. Miami at the Giants. The Junior G-Men. Jacksonville at Oakland. Gimme the Jags. Cleveland at Arizona. The Cardinals. Minnesota at LAC. The Chargers, the bet of the week. Falcons at 49ers. The Atlanta Falcons. Rams at Cowboys. Let's go Cowboys. Sunday night, Buffalo at Pittsburgh. The Steelers. And on Monday night football, the Indianapolis Colts at the Nolan Saints. Colts in the points. Awesome picks this week, fat guy. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, that's it for us. NFL Week 15 picks are in the book. Remember the link in the description below. Make your picks. See if you can beat us. Try to finish on top of the fat guy. Get that t-shirt. Who doesn't want to do that? Who doesn't want to do that? Speaking of finishing on top of the fat guy.